Brianna Bosch and I own Blossom and Branch Farm. As a fifth generation farmer, I've learned a lot about different methods and techniques in farming and gardening, and I'm here to share with you the ones that we've found to work the best. Welcome to the farm. Hey everyone, it's Brianna here from Blossom and Branch Farm. Welcome to our greenhouse. Today we're gonna to be talking about soil blocking and how to soil block in a way that doesn't require styrofoam and doesn't require peat. Those are two kind of problematic things that tend to be a little bit ubiquitous in the soil blocking realm. So we have figured out a way to uh, work without those materials and we're gonna share our peat-free recipe with you today and also all of the tips and tricks that we use to be successful at soil blocking. Let's go. So if you've never seen a soil block before, they're a really great way of starting seeds. And I'll tell you what the difference is between these and a seed tray. So in a traditional seed tray or even a small pot, uh, made of plastic. What happens with these is that when the roots hit the bottom of these pots or the sides of these pots, they hit the side and they start to circle. So they start to do this circling pattern. And you've probably seen this when you bought a plant at the garden store or at the nursery, where it's starting to circle the roots and you pull it out and it's just this tangled root system. Uh, what happens with those is at the end of the year, you tend to pull them out of the ground and they look exactly like they did when you planted them. They have trouble extending the root system out and they have trouble uptaking as many nutrients and as much water as they should be able to. So this uh, method of seed starting called soil blocking, the theory behind it is that with the soil block, instead of being encased in plastic, they just sit on a tray just like this. And uh, there's air all the way around all the sides. And so what happens with that is once the roots hit the side of that soil block, instead of hitting the side of a plastic piece and starting to circle and do that little root bound situation, these hit the side and they do what's called air pruning. So they stop growing. They hit the side, they hit the air and they stop. And then they send out more roots from the base of the seedling. So what's happening is you're getting a nice, thick, healthy mass of roots. And as soon as this gets planted into the ground with all these roots just right there at the edge, ready to go, they hit the ground whoosh, and they take off. And so we find a really major difference between our soil block seedlings and ones that come in trays. The ones that we soil block are so much healthier. They're more drought tolerant. They're more pest resistant because they have a stronger root system. They're able to assimilate better with the soil fungi. And so we have a better, happier, healthier plant with less work. So let's get talking about all the important things that come uh, with soil blocking and the things we need to think about. So the first consideration with soil blocking is going to be your tools, your soil blocker being the most important tool. And the soil blockers come in several different sizes and it depends on kind of what you are trying to accomplish and what your goals are and what your space is like. So there are a few different sizes that we use predominantly. Now there are also some larger soil blockers than these but we tend to not use those ones because they're very, very big. We're not really growing out full nursery plants here. We're just starting our seeds in these. So there is a bigger one. We just don't use that one. So the smallest one, we'll work from smallest to largest here. This is the 20 soil blocker. It makes 20 soil blocks and it's four by five. And you can see when you depress this little trigger right here, it squeezes out your soil blocks and each one has a little dibble inset. So that little dibbler, makes the little indentation for your seeds. So instead of having to go along in your seed tray and push your finger in to make your hole for your seed, which is kind of a pain, let's all be honest about it, <laughs> this already does it for you. So you can see how they're raised a little bit on the side. Perfect depth for starting those seedlings. And all you do is squeeze this, it pops those out. So this is the smallest one. They are three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch, so pretty small. The uh, advantage of the three quarter inch is that you can fit a lot of these. So the trays that we use, and we'll talk about this, the trays that we use, if we're using these little mini blocks, we can fit 280 of these onto one of these trays. So that's quite a lot in a really small space. Um, so things that are hard to germinate, for example, Lysianthus that we start here at the farm that traditionally have a really bad <laughs> germination rate um, or are very difficult to germinate. Those are ones that we start in these little tiny blocks because we're not having to take up a lot of space with seeds that may or may not germinate. Uh, the cons of these ones are that they tend to be really small. So let's look at one that's already pre-made, but you'll see exactly how small they are. And so with these tiny little blocks, what tends to happen is that they dry out very, very quickly. Here's the small ones. They dry out really fast. And so if you don't have the time 
to water your seedlings every morning and sometimes up to twice a day if the temperatures are warm, then you may not wanna go with the minis, okay? They're also a little bit more temperamental. So I usually recommend that you wait until you feel more comfortable with soil blocking before you start using the minis because they just tend to be a little bit more finicky and you might get frustrated and then you might give up on soil blocking and that's not what we want. The next size up, and this is a great size for a lot of different applications, is this one and a half inch. So it has five in there. So instead of this, the really tiny micro mini ones, this one makes this size and it's kind of what I call the mama bear size. So it's the medium size soil block. It's not as big as the next size up and it's not as tiny as the minis. This is a really user friendly size and this is the one that I recommend for everyone. So again, this is the five soil blocker. You can see it works the same. I depress the trigger and then here's our little dibblers right here. So again, it's gonna make those little indentations for where you wanna put your seeds. Now, if you need to surface sow a seed, you could also always pop these guys out. So you just squeeze on this side. These are removable, which makes it really nice for cleaning. And so now you don't have anything in here. So if I wanted to just make a block and I was gonna surface sow a seed, then I might just take these dibbles out and then just go ahead and make a, make a block without the little dibbler insert. These just pop right back in, so super user-friendly. Let's pop that guy back, okay. So again, mama bear size, pro, con, um, these take up a little bit more space. So on our tray, you can see we can fit 72 onto one tray. Um, so you can still fit quite a few, but not as many as the minis. But this is what we use for most of our seedlings. Uh, we don't have to pot up when we're using this side, so you're saving a step um, by using this size. Now, there's also our big daddy blocker. This is the two inch. So you can see we have in here already our little inserts. Instead of the little dibblers that, like these, so these ones have the little dibblers for where you put your seeds, these have these black squares in here. These black squares are the same size as this soil blocker. So this is where potting up gets really fast and convenient and easy with soil blocking, is if we're growing, for example, Lysianthus in these tiny blocks, and then it's ready to pot up, all we have to do is make some soil blocks of this size with this little insert in there, and then we can just pot up our little minis right into these bigger ones. Super easy, very convenient. I love being able to do it that way, but these ones are pretty big. So the nice thing is these all fit in our trays really, really nicely. I believe I can fit 48 of these larger ones into these trays. You can see how these fit just perfectly. We are gonna talk about these trays later on in the class. Um, but they fit in there perfectly. But again, you can't fit as many. So if you're tighter on space, you might not want to use the two inch. The only time we start seeds in these two inch blocks are if we have a very large seed or a plant that has a really quickly establishing tap root, like sweet peas, okay? So sweet peas, bigger seed, and they also take off pretty quickly and they take up a lot of space. So we actually do start our sweet peas in these two inch soil blocks and they do really well because they don't like root disturbance. So Another pro of soil blocking that we didn't talk about, but it's very true. If you have a seedling that doesn't like root disturbance, for example, we don't start these in soil blocks, but zinnias or sunflowers or sweet peas uh, that we do start in soil blocks, you just have this cute little block of soil that you have to transplant. We're not having to wrestle with the seed tray and getting a seedling out of there and then trying to loosen those root bound roots if you have a seedling or a plant that is sensitive to root disturbance, they are gonna hate you for doing that. So that's where having a soil block is great because we just pop this guy right in the soil. Really, really minimal root disturbance with soil blocks. All right, so those are the size sizes that we, uh, that we have here at the farm. I like to have a collection. These are all by a company called Ladbrook and we order them through Johnny Seeds. We're gonna link that down below. Now, there are also stand-up soil blockers. So if you are doing a lot of soil blocking and maybe it's feeling like it's a little hard on your back or uh, you're doing just a really large quantity, you can get the stand-up ones and you can make a lot more at one time, but those are a lot more expensive. So we just go with the handheld ones. We start 15,000 and honestly, once you get the hang of soil blocking, you can do it pretty quickly. So we just go with the handheld ones. Uh, the other equipment that you're going to need, let's talk about all the other stuff that you need to uh, get started with slow blocking. Good news is none of this stuff takes up much room to store.
The good news is you are not going to need a lot of materials or equipment to get started with soil blocking and you don't have to store stuff. So this is one of the things I hate about starting in seed trays is trying to store all the seed trays. What we've come up with instead that we use are these ta -da, fiberglass cafeteria trays, uh, also called service trays. And these are the perfect dimension for starting our slow blocks. We're gonna list these down below, um, a couple sources where you can get them. And again, made out of fiberglass, so not plastic. They are going to last you forever. You can see how firm they are. So this is why I like these over using a 1020 tray or a styrofoam tray. You'll see a lot of soil blockers using those little styrofoam meat trays that you get at the grocery store, um, or some people will even just buy them to use for soil blocking, but they're really flimsy and they're really lightweight. So you'll pick it up and your soil blocks might go flying, um, or you'll pick it up and it'll break under the weight of all that wet soil. So, and again, styrofoam, not great for the environment. So let's think about the sustainability factor. Fiberglass, these are gonna last you forever. You can see I can hold it with one hand very firmly. This is going to hold a lot of weight are very solid. We got ours from a restaurant down the street that was going out of sale. Now I am cheap and I will buy things secondhand whenever I can. If you have a restaurant nearby that's going out of business, um, you can see if they might have any of these, but you can also just go ahead and order them online. So we're going to link them below um, and make sure that you're getting this right dimension. So if you get the accurate, the correct dimension, your soil blocks are going to fit right in here just so. Okay, so we've got one here, we've got one here, and then with our minis, we can fit two back to back. So one mini here and one mini down here is going to fit just perfectly. So you can see why I like to use these, especially because we have a small greenhouse. Because we have a small greenhouse, we don't have a lot of extra real estate. You don't want to have any wasted space. We can stack these two to a shelf and we can really pack in our seedlings really tight. So those are the trays that you need. Other equipment, there's really not much. You'll need some kind of measuring cup for your uh, soil blocking recipe, which we're gonna get into next. So you can use whatever for this. You could use a, a scoop, you could use a Pyrex, you could use a jar. Uh, a part is a part is a part, okay? So when we're looking at our recipe, we go by parts. One part of this, one part of that. That part can be as big as you make it. If you wanna use a five gallon bucket as your part, you can do that and make a really big batch. Or if you don't start that many seeds at home, you can use something like a jar and make a smaller batch at a time. Totally up to you, but something to measure with. And then we also use this super fancy tool. Ta -da. Um, lots of people use various things for soil blocking in terms of uh, the scraper. So you'll see when we make our recipe, but this is just used to scrape off the bottom of our block. I like to use these paint spatulas because they're really good for stirring up and they're also really good for scraping off the bottom. So we can make a nice level scrape with this. Um, they're also portable. They're made out of metal. These guys last a long time. Just one disclaimer, don't leave it in the water or in your wet soil blocking uh, mix because then it will start to rust and then you'll have to get a new one. So just keep it dry. The only other thing that you're going to need other than your soil blocker, your trays, and your scraper is gonna be some kind of watering can. So when we are watering soil blocks, if you use a watering can like this one that has a lot of holes on the end, this is a really hard one to use for soil blocks. We do not recommend using this kind of watering can because it's gonna happen and I'll show you uh, with one that I have ready here to sacrifice. <laughs> What happens is you're gonna disintegrate your slow blocks. So instead what you need, you need to find yourself a watering can like this that has a long neck and a narrow spout. What that's gonna allow you to do is to be able to really accurately pinpoint where you are placing your water on your tray. So we wanna be sure that we're bottom watering and that we're going right in next to the soil blocks, not on top of the soil blocks, okay? This is really important. Don't water on top, bottom water. A, it has to do with the fungus, uh, we're not gonna be getting our seedling leaves wet. We wanna keep those dry because that's gonna help keep them fungus free. But also if we water on top, we're gonna to disintegrate our soil blocks. So always watering on the bottom in the channels in between our soil blocks.
One of the only other things you're going to need, and this is easy to find, you can scrounge one up from anywhere, is some kind of bin to mix your soil block mix in. And there are a couple of things that will help set you up for success with your bin. Um, number one, I like to make it something somewhat shallow. I don't like too deep of a bin because reaching in there can be a little bit difficult. Um, so I like something a little bit shallow, about this size, just about right. And I like to have a little bit of a grid on the bottom. So you can see there's this little raised pattern here on the bottom of my bin. And what that allows me to do is as I'm pressing down with my soil block, I'm pressing down here and that's kind of doing a little bit of that scraping work for me with that putty knife. So I can kind of scrape it a little bit here by twisting it back and forth on this bin. And then I don't have to do as much scraping. So it just kind of saves a step. Um, you don't have to have a bin that has a pattern on the bottom, but I do like to have that as an option. So some kind of bin is going to be helpful. And then something is a humidity dome. So um, unfortunately these trays are kind of a weird size. So the traditional seed starting humidity domes don't fit over these. You could use something like burlap. Uh, we will often use saran wrap. We just reuse the same pieces over and over throughout the season. And we just keep that on until those seeds germinate and then we remove it. So Something as simple as that uh, will help just to keep the humidity in, especially while your seeds are germinating so you're not having to constantly water these guys. There is one more thing that's important to have when you are soil blocking, and some of this comes down to the bag mix that you're going to be using, but we found that all of the bag mixes that we use um, tend to have a little bit of clumpiness to them. So some chunks, some pieces of wood, or some rocks in there, and that can be problematic with our soil blocks. So a sifter is the last thing that you should probably invest in. Now this is one that fits into a five gallon bucket, so that's really super convenient, um, but you could use anything. You could just use some mesh as your strainer. You don't have to get as fancy as this. We just pop this right over our five gallon bucket when we're sifting out our soil, and that makes it the right consistency for blocking.